A much anticipated display of the Northern Lights has proved to be something of a disappointment for many as extensive cloud cover hampered sky gazers chances of catching a glimpse of the fantastic light show. That's right. The Aurora Borealis are usually a rare sight in England, but have been much more visible recently. And many of you sent in pictures when they lit up the sky just last week. Let's take a look. Stunning pictures there, absolutely stunning. Thank you to those of you who sent in those pictures from last week's appearance of the Northern Lights. Well, let's speak now to astronomer Gary Files, who joins us. Good morning, Gary. So if we well, go back to what we were saying, we were expecting to see them last night as far south as Birmingham, but many were disappointed. Why is that? Well, I mean, in an age of everybody seems to have digital cameras nowadays, so I think everybody's out there snapping pictures of the aurora, but I think it'll probably come as quite a surprise to many people that I think from memory, the most southerly location in the northern hemisphere where the aurora borealis has been spotted is actually Hawaii. So we can actually see auroral storms sink quite a way south, so long as the energy we've, we've received from the sun is strong enough, and if these solar storms reach a certain level or a threshold, then there's no reason why the, Euro the aurora could be seen from way further south in the UK. So the reason that people wouldn't have seen them last night is that those conditions weren't met, even though it was potentially forecast? Yes, this is absolutely right. It, 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 we can forecast and predict, of course, when it's more likely that we are going to see the northern lights, but it's very, very difficult to say with any sort of real precision that, for example, you know, at three minutes past nine tomorrow night, you need to get outside and you're going to see the aurora because it, 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 it's quite a dynamic environment that creates the light. So it's pretty tricky to nail down precise when you can see them. But if you do catch them, it's a great sight, so you should definitely try. And, and Gary, why particularly have we seemingly seen them more frequently of late? Is there a particular reason? Yes, there absolutely is. So the sun goes through an 11 year cycle of producing sunspots. So the sunspot cycles, as it's known as, has an 11 year period. And at the moment, we're just reaching a maximum time when the sun is producing more of these sunspots than it normally would do. And the reason why this affects the northern light is because attributed to these sunspot regions, we get these sort of big, huge, loopy structures we call plasma tubes or huge magnetic fields. And if these magnetic fields open out and pop, literally because there's so much energy in them, well, that energy can propagate through the, through the solar system. And if the Earth is in the firing line, then those particles arrive here on Earth. They're attracted at Earth's magnetic field lines, and then they get pulled into our atmosphere that interact with gas like oxygen and nitrogen and produce the lights that we see. So we're seeing a real uptick as we head towards what we call, in the game, solar maximum. This is a maximum time where sunspot activity is at its peak. And does that now mean, therefore, on this 11-year cycle that we're li now likely to not see them as frequently for the next few years? No, not at all, because we're we don't think we're actually at maximum yet. So we've got sort of maybe another, another year potentially before we get this maximum. Then we've got to come down the other side of the peak to get to where we are now, and then it will continue to subside. But you know what, and this is the really great thing, is that th this mechanism is not the only progenitor for the Northern Lights. We can get all manner of different mechanisms that will trigger the Northern Lights here on Earth. So although solar maximum is the big one, it ain't the only one. So, Gary, people who were out and about and were disappointed at not seeing them last night or other people who want to have a go at trying to uh, chase down some northern lights, what's the advice? If I wanted to go out and see them, what's the best thing to do? 
Well, we need it to be clear. That's that, that's one of the big things, right? As we've just seen in the weather forecast, that's not always guaranteed in the UK. So that's the big thing, right? If there's clouds around, you ain't going to see anything, of course. But And the other big factor as well to remember is, is, is try to check your lunar calendar as well. If the moon's in the sky, it can sometimes wash out the faint aurora. And it's just about giving it a try. You know, get online. There's all sorts of apps around nowadays and lots of information that will give you an update on what the current conditions are and whether we're going to see the northern lights any particular night. And you know what? You've just got to get out and give it a try. Get wrapped up. Get away from the TV. <laughs> go somewhere dark. Take a flask. And just sit it out and wait. But you know what? And the other thing as well, look north. Don't look south. They're called the north. <laughs> the clues in the name. I mean, they, they do look spectacular. And some of the images that we see that people are able to record are particularly mm. vivid. Are, are they more vivid even on a, on a camera or, or, or on a phone than, than to the naked eye? You know, you know what, I'm, I'm so pleased you've mentioned that, Roger, because this is a really, really important point, is that, you know, you've, we've probably all been there. I have. You know, you get up in the morning, you're having a coffee and breakfast, and then you open Instagram, like we quite often might do, or Facebook even, and there, there they are. You see all of these amazing images, like what we've just seen as well. And, you, and you know, you'll say to your partner, say, how did we miss that? <laughs> and everybody comes really quite frustrated very quickly, and you think, we, we should have seen this. Well, the truth is is that with all of these smartphones, all these super duper cameras on them and these DSLR cameras, they are what's responsible for taking the image we, images we see on social media and on the television. And our eyes are very, very different. Mm. So what you see on the TV and what we see on social media ain't anything like what you'll see with the naked eye. Well, Gary, at least... Sorry, thank yes. Gary, thank you. That's astronomer Gary Files there. You've given us a lot to mull over. Thank you, Gary, for that.